Lee Clapp with the Addiction Policy Forum. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what you're doing, what the organization is doing and has been doing since we last talked. Last time we talked, it was about the Warm Handoff Program, which actually had its roots right here in Indiana County. And that, I know, is, is a program that you folks helped celebrate last year. We did. We celebrated it last year and this year. We actually gave an award, uh, an innovation award, um, to Secretary Smith, who is just so proactive in her thinking and also your Department of Corrections. Um, This is something that Pennsylvania is really doing right compared to the rest of the country. When we talk about warm handoffs, of course, we're talking about after a person overdoses on uh, drugs. And it is such a vulnerable time uh, when they come out and they are revived and they've survived. And you think that might be the time when uh, they're ready for treatment. And that's not always the case. It's Uh, actually quite a dangerous time for a person who's using drugs. So uh, Pennsylvania has recognized that it's a critical time to reach out to people and say, you don't have to keep living this way. We can connect you to treatment. And I heard Secretary Smith, when we gave the award um, this spring um, in Harrisburg, she said, instead of being given a phone number, the patient is told, you know, you know, you can call this number. We will make the call for them. Mm -hmm. So, I think that is so key because it's it's difficult. It's scary when your brain is taken over by addiction and drugs. Um, you are convinced that that's the most important thing in the world and that breaking away from that is, is very scary. So uh, we commend uh, Pennsylvanians for really tackling the addiction crisis. I mean, you all, uh, you had the highest number of overdose deaths in the entire country in 2017, yeah. uh, 5,388. So you know how how hard hit you've been by this crisis. Yeah, there's nobody in Pennsylvania that hasn't been touched in one way or another by this crisis indeed. Um, And programs like Warm Handoff and and so many others that we read about with the Addiction Policy Forum, that's really what you're all about is uh, sort of uh, finding ways to encourage programs such as this to be developed and then sharing them so that others might say, hey, there's something we could try here. Exactly. The Addiction Policy Forum has an initiative called uh, Innovation Now, and we go into the states most impacted by the opioid and drug overdose crisis and identify the people who are doing really innovative things to respond to addiction differently because we can't live with the status quo. Um, In Pennsylvania, you're losing 15 loved ones a day to drug overdose, and much of that is because of addiction. This is a preventable disease, and so we feel like shining a spotlight on people doing innovative work, whether it is in harm reduction, whether it is in medical-assisted treatment for helping overcome opioid use disorder. Uh, Pennsylvania is really looking at the whole toolkit and saying, what do we have in here, and what can we use, and how can we save lives and, and turn this crisis around? Kimberly, is it difficult uh, from your standpoint to measure what programs work, what programs should be developed further, and what maybe isn't working and we should go in a different direction? How do you measure that? I mean, if your organization saves one life, I'm sure the family of that person says, this is worth it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, So it is, you're right, you're right. I mean, we have a wonderful network of treatment providers, innovators, researchers uh, who tell us about the good things that are happening state by state. So we feel like we have our finger on the pulse of the good work that's being done. Um, But we also do feel like Pennsylvanians are bombarded with ads, call this 1-800 number for help, and you don't know which one to turn to. And that's one of the reasons why we committed resources to creating a database of treatment providers across the country Um, It's called the Addiction Resource Center. It has 56,000 recovery resources across the country. Over 1,600 of those recovery resources are in Pennsylvania. And they are just a phone call or a text or a web browse away. Um, If I could give you that number, it's 833-301-HELP, 833-301-HELP, or the addictionresourcecenter.org. And you can go on there right now, click on Pennsylvania, Click on your county, put in your address, and mark what services you need. Do you need counseling? Do you need a women-only facility? Um, Do you have private insurance or do you not? We feel like if you can go and search a hotel as to whether it has a pool or not, 
you certainly should be able to go and find out what treatment services are right for your loved one, for your family. And you've got lots of resources right there in Pennsylvania. Kimberly Clapp is with us. So we're talking with her on behalf of the Addiction Policy Forum, which does such wonderful work. Um, you're based um, in, in the Washington, D.C. area, not D.C. proper, right? We are based on K Street um, in Washington, D.C., oh, yeah. but we have resources in every state, and we feel deeply connected uh, to every state. Mostly, um, initially, we hear from parents who've lost their children or their teenagers to drug overdose. And I've got to tell you, they are the most courageous people on the planet. You know, it's it's amazing that you're able to get out of bed every day after having lost a child. Yeah. But then to get out of bed and come to Washington and bring ideas back to Pennsylvania to better the lives of other families, I just think it's miraculous work that families do. So we are volunteer-led but um, staff supported. And, um, and I have roots in Pennsylvania, too, myself, went to college there and, and really care about Pennsylvanians. And um, we want to turn this crisis around, um, and, and we're going to. We're going to. Part of what will do that and part of what you and your listeners can do today is spread the word that addiction is a brain disease. Mm-hmm. And that's not us just making up pie-in-the-sky information. This is the U.S. Surgeon General calls addiction a brain disease, the White House drug czar, the head of NIH. If this is science. You can look at scans of the brain and see the way the brain has changed because of addiction. And if we start to rethink the way we approach addiction, if we see it as a brain disease, like a loved one who has cancer or diabetes, we can reframe how we approach it. We don't say, oh, gosh, you have diabetes, you should really cut back on your insulin, you know? Yeah. So there, there is medical-assisted treatment for opioid use disorder, and it should be encouraged. And that's just, that's just one example. And the other is just the compassion that we need to have for our loved ones who are struggling with addiction. It is a powerful foe. I don't know how much interaction you've had with someone who's addicted to heroin, but when they are doing well... It'll break down in tears and tell you, I don't want to live this way. I don't want this life. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, even those who are seeking treatment, even those who so powerfully want to overcome uh, this addiction, it's it's an extremely powerful foe, and, and we need to use all the tools in the tools box, t- toolbox to save our loved ones. Yeah, you know, we had just from the Armstrong Indiana Clarion Drug and Alcohol Commission a couple of weeks ago, we had a young, young man in here who now works for them in this very field, and to hear that kind of a success story from someone who was so lost to addiction uh, and to know what a difference uh, that one person is making in the life um, People who have been addicted have a unique ability to talk to others who are in the battle, don't they? Oh, my gosh. The recovery stories, you're right, are the most important stories, um, and they are inspiring. Because when we talk to uh, addiction psychiatrists and medical experts, they say what's wonderful about uh, treating this disease space is that patients can and do recover. You can't say the same for some other diseases that uh, really are deadly. This is an area where um, patients can recover. The brain can recover. It's a beautiful thing. So to anytime you can hear someone's recovery story and share that um, and be that source of inspiration for someone who's struggling, I, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's very powerful. She is Kimberly Clapp, the Addiction Policy Forum. Kimberly, if you could give those numbers again, the phone number and the website. I'm so glad you asked. So we call it the ARC, the Addiction Resource Center. The number is 1-833-301-HELP. And I just want to reinforce that we are not uh, associated with any one treatment center. So this is an unbiased source, and it's sorted by where you live, what kind of treatment you might need. You can also go explore the ARC yourself based on your address and your exact treatment needs at addictionresourcecenter.org. Very good, very good. Hey, thank you so much for being with us. Congrats to the Nets. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for devoting so much time to this important topic. We're grateful to you.